All right, guys, we're here to take a quick look behind the scenes of what it took to put these stories together for TechWise TV, live studio broadcast in the booth. As you can see, this is one of the setups that we did ahead of time to kind of do pre-rolls so that the crowd out here knew that we were about to go live. So normally the music would be pounding out here. People start to queue up and gather because they're going to take a look at the story. But that's just one of the broadcast screens we used. It takes a lot of people behind the scenes and equipment to put it all together and make it work. Let's come look underneath the stage. Follow me. So back in this nondescript booth area, we have all the equipment hidden here, and you would never know how much is in here. Watch. So here, anyway, is the proverbial men behind the curtain, I should say. It doesn't have to be men exactly, but let's take a look at some of the positions in play here. So Bill's on audio. Say hi, Bill. Basically, audio is what you think it is. It's all the microphones are coming in through here. We use wireless head-worn microphones because the noise level in here is just incredible. But he's also got a ClearCom system. You can see him wearing both headphones as well as his ClearCom so he can communicate both with the technical director, who that's Alan on the left, along with our director on the right. They communicate with the floor director and each camera so they can decide exactly what's the pickup. What are they going to, what shot is going to be next as they anticipate what the guests are going to do. Because in this situation, we are going live out to the show floor doing what's called a fully switched edit. So we record record everything, including every camera, but we're picking the absolute best shot, including what I usually refer to as our fourth camera, very unique here, in that it's a scan converter. So that we can get really deep close-ups, high definition, pick and push and zoom in on command line displays, whatever that technical story needs to be told, we've got a way to capture it here. So these guys are going to switch it, communicate, and then send it all up to the floor where we're actually capturing the storyline that you're most used to seeing. Let's go take a look at some of the unique things there, all right? Follow me. So. Anyway, we built the studio so that it's above the actual men behind the curtain down here so that you can preserve all the booth space because your focus is on taking care of customers, taking care of guests for the show. So as we come up here, this is where all, I was going to say all the magic happens, but that's probably self-serving. But as we look over here, our camera positions, kind of from uh, my right to the left over here, we've got cameras one through three. These are operated by people that are going to stand there. They're wearing their ClearCom headset so they can communicate with the director. There's also a guy that's wearing another headset over here who's going to be our floor director. And as these guys are working the cameras, picking the shots that the director has given them, they're trying to anticipate what we're doing, as I mentioned before. We've got a countdown clock where we always program just the amount of time that we're targeting so that as you add all the segments up together, pick exactly the amount of time so as it all gets reassembled into a show, live or otherwise, we're going to have a complete show that hits the targets that we want. Now, one other thing to point out, if you'll notice, most cameras are not going to be on a rig like this. This is what I call crew creativity. And this is because, well, frankly, it's a small amount of space. What they did was they thought, you know what? This is not a camera that we have to move around a lot. It's what we call a lockdown camera. It gets kind of a wider shot, and it gives the director a chance to pick something if for some reason one of the camera guys would just didn't anticipate correctly and they had to cut to something really fast. We've always got that shot to go to. Very, very handy, very nice to have, and it allows us to focus on our guests and not make them do you know, inane things to support live TV. And as you'll notice, people screaming for Jimmy Ray over here, if you could even hear that outside. So he's toiling away at the computer. This is the same lab table that we carry around with us. Well, carry around with us. Anytime we get a chance to. Anytime we can, right. But this is the same lab table we use in our normal San Jose studios in Building 13. And um, it's your basic old lab table. But a couple of things that are different are unique to TechWise TV. And this is something we just somewhat learned over time through trial and error. So engineers, who was our primary guest on the show, well, they're comfortable with a pen in their hand. We tried to do whiteboard, but that just never quite works right with cameras. So we ended up settling on this Wacom, Wacom, or however you would say that, but basically this Cintiq tablet so that an engineer can take a pen and draw on top of a slide or start from scratch and really express a concept uh, in any way that is necessary. I think that's actually been a, a good storytelling method for us. Yeah, it's worked yeah. out a lot, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But kind of supporting that and making sure we have good signal flow, because everything we do on the show here is captured in HD. So we have to pay attention to signal flow throughout as we talk about what's here. And if you look underneath the curtain, so to speak, I'll move back this director's chair a little bit here. Now, if you remember before, I mentioned that there was a camera four. So this is the scan converter. It's actually a two-channel, high-definition scan converter that I would almost consider kind of a fourth and fifth camera. So at any point in time, the director, either the live switch or by recording what we call an ISO, we have the chance, even in post-production, to pull better close-ups of a uh, you know something command line output or something that's really hard to see by the time you're watching it there at home. That way, we can really focus on exactly what is the right way to tell that story. Well, the scan converter is key to that, and then for getting a nice 
nice, smooth um, signal flows. For, uh, for capturing that, we found that the Mac Mini is a nice, easy to carry, consistently capable uh, device for connecting out. We run virtualization on that so that we can run Windows, as some people are coming in with Windows dependent programs, of course. Um, but basically, these are kind of the, some of the keys to the kingdom, some of the behind the scenes type of things we do when it comes to putting a story together. I think the only other thing I wanted to say was, if it gets your attention for a second, is just kind of a, hey, thank you to the Borderless team for allowing us to come out to Interop, build this awesome stage, get to interact with all the, the people here and all the competitors are out here. Just the, the environment has just been electric. And um, anyway, hope that toyed a little bit of a help there behind the scenes. Take care.